Can our genes be used to determine how long HIV develops into AIDS if someone is not on treatment? Dr. Gerald Mbowa, a Thrive2 PhD fellow, human geneticist and bioinformatics scientist, investigated this phenomenon for his PhD and found it to be true. Genes, a common thread of molecules that determine our biology of life, are inherited from parents when we are conceived. For decades, genes have been used to determine our predisposition to illnesses such as Alzheimer's, heart disease, and cancer. But how much do we know about genes determining the years a person living with HIV will take to develop AIDS if he or she is not on treatment? In 2017, Dr. Mboa took up this question searching its answer from 344 blood samples of children living with HIV. I started doing this research in 2014 as part of my PhD. And during that time, my interest was looking at HIV in general. So when it comes to HIV, there are broadly three different levels we can talk about. The first level is we have individuals who get exposed to HIV, but they never get infected to get the disease. Then we have category two. These are individuals who, got, who get exposed to HIV and they get infected. However, they will stay without progressing to AIDS for a long period of time. Sometimes you talk about 10 years plus, which we call longer term non progressors. Then we have what we call the rapid progressors. Those are the majority of the population. They get infected with HIV and they rapidly progress to develop AIDS. The AIDS epidemic is firmly established in Uganda's general population. As of 2018, an estimated 1.4 million people were living with HIV and an estimated 23,000 Ugandans died of AIDS-related illnesses. Currently, HIV prevalence among adults aged 15 to 49 stands at 5.7%, which implies that 6 in every 100 people in Uganda are infected with the virus. Despite the high disease prevalence, Uganda has a 67% antiretroviral therapy at coverage, which puts the country at a lower threshold than the globally set target of 90% of all people diagnosed with HIV being sustained by us. And maybe if we are to take it at a global scale, in 2018 we had, had 1.7 million individuals who got infected in that year with HIV AIDS. So you can see the trends in HIV infection. I don't like it to, to go down. So a lot of efforts are being put underway. And many of them, people have talked about them. Condom use, abstinence, using treatment for those who are HIV infected. But I mean the best way to eradicate HIV globally, not only in Uganda, would take treatment, which is already in place. But on top of treatment, we also need a vaccine. That's why the work I'm doing is contributing too much to the development of a vaccine. Just like every patient is different, so is gene mutation. However, not all mutations affect health and development. Researchers need a large number of patients with similar mutations and symptoms before they can identify a suspicious pattern. Knowing this, Dr. Mboa has databases of over 1,000 patients whose blood he is examining to identify common genes. These databases are an invaluable treasure to Dr. Mboa. He is part of a younger generation of research scientists whose work revolves around big data. I wrote an article, I think early this year, and it was published in more than three different platforms. And it is out there for anyone who is interested in reading about this work of trying to identify which genes predispose someone to, to be either a longer term non progressor or a rapid HIV AIDS progressor. He is confident that the approach of using genes to determine the progression of HIV into AIDS is a timely innovation in the fight against HIV AIDS in Uganda. This is because health workers will prioritize treatment for those in most need, that is to say, those who rapidly progress towards AIDS, such as children who have weaker immune systems compared to adults. Having completed his PhD in 2020, Dr. Mboa is now on the road to becoming an independent principal investigator. He envisions building a bioinformatics research group at Makerere University where he can work with a team of genomics and bioinformatics scientists to investigate 
a wide range of diseases in Africa to impact care, prevention, and therapy.